Okay, so this isn't simplifying. It's not a trig identity. We have to actually solve it. We have to give all of the answers. And so you remember trig functions, because they're periodic, they repeat over and over. Um, you might have one to infinity amount of answers. You have to give all of them. So the first thing we should do is our number one strategy. Write everything in terms of sine and cosine. So I'm going to rewrite this. I'm going to leave this because it's already sine and cosine, and this will be cosine x over sine x. And so after this, I would multiply by sine x on both sides. Okay, and I know it's tempting to divide by cosine of x on both sides. Uh, but here's the deal. Um, when you're dividing by cosine x on both sides, you might be removing answers. It's kind of like when x squared equals 4x. If you look at that, it might be tempting to divide by x and then just x is 4. But there's actually two different answers here, right? If I subtract it over and then I factor... I'm actually getting two answers, 0 and 4. So I have to be careful about that, that I don't actually get rid of that 0 answer. And that's why if I divide by x, um, I'm dividing by 0 at 0. So either way, what I'm saying here is that uh, when you have something like this, subtract it over. So you have cosine cubed x minus cosine of x equals 0. Okay. Now. I'm going to, just like in that x example that I just showed you, factor. Cosine squared minus 1 equals 0. I took a cosine out. And so in this one, you're just pulling a GCF of cosine out. But sometimes you're going to have to factor like we had talked about, where it's actually quadratic in disguise. And you might have to do a little more work. But once it's factored, you're going to use the zero product property. If it's equal to zero, then each of these factors tells us um, different answers. So we're asking, when is cosine of x equal zero? Also, when is cosine squared minus one equals zero? So we're going to have a lot of answers. When is cosine of x zero? Thinking of your unit circle, that would be at pi over two. And then the other answer would be at three pi over two. That's just on one rotation of the unit circle. Now, if you think about it, pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2, they're all going to be repeating themselves every time you rotate around the circle. But not only that, those two are separated by pi. And so if I think about traveling by pi and then by pi again, instead of doing these plus or minus 2 pi k, I can just write plus or minus pi k. And so that written right there, what I boxed right there, actually includes 3 pi over 2 in it, okay? So over here, on the other side, we're going to add one over. And then when we square root, we're going to have, again, two different answers. Because cosine x can be 1, or cosine x could be negative 1. Because I square rooted, you have two possibilities. Cosine of x could be negative 1 or positive 1. All right, so when is cosine of x 1? That is at 0 plus or minus 2 pi k. When is cosine of x negative 1? That is at pi plus or minus 2 pi k. Now, this also does the same thing we were talking about back here. Um, we notice that 0 and pi... They're on opposite sides of the circle, and so instead of including, including both, we could just write it as 0 plus or minus pi k. Okay, now the point is, um, these are really small details. The point is that you should be able to write all of them. Even if you wrote these two and then these two all plus or minus 2 pi k, I think that's, that's pretty good. All right, so here is the problem you should try. All right, 2 sine squared theta plus sine theta equals 1. And just a hint here, you don't want to do a GCF. So you should pause the video and try it. Okay, so we are going to subtract 1 over to get it 
equal to zero. So if we factor then, then we can use a pro zero product property. All right, I'm going to think of this like 2x squared plus x minus 1 and factor it that way. All right, now this has a lead coefficient. So using trial and error, I know that it has to have at least an x and a 2x. And then we know, based on the 1, it should be 1 and 1. Now the signs, we have to figure out how we can make this work. So we want it to be a positive 1. And if we FOIL the insides and the outsides, uh, we want to end up with positive 1. So this would be 1x and 2x. We want the 1x to be negative. All right. So what we're actually solving is sine of theta plus 1, 2 sine of theta, 2 sine theta minus 1. Okay. And that is all equal to 0. So we have actually two different problems we have to do. If I subtract 1 over, we're asking what, when is sine of theta equal negative 1. And also if we add 1 over and then divide by 2, sine of theta is equal to 1 half. When is that true? And so when is sine of theta negative 1? That would be when you're at 3 pi over 2. And when is sine of theta 1 half? Uh, there are actually two places on the unit circle. There is pi over 6 and 5 pi over 6. Now there are three answers there, but we should probably include the 2 pi k for everything. So we have three kind of sets of answers, but really there are an infinite amount of answers you could give. Alright, so just make sure you're including all of them.